Good afternoon, everybody. This is Shannon Scott, the Bard of Bonaventure, coming to you from inside of ooh, a sweltering hot paradisia looking place. Just wa be glad you're watching this uh, video from inside the, uh, the comfort of hopefully some air conditioning. I'm in a black suit. And by the way, <laughs> if I haven't mentioned it, the last day I'm doing a tour in a black suit. I'm sorry. This one probably actually will just go to Goodwill, um, which is always nice. I always feel good about dropping off black couture Italian suits to uh, the Goodwill. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, you know, I remember the little people. <laughs> totally messing with you, but uh, but true about the suits. Um, but I had to come out and pay a visit to a mentor, uh, a friend that really I just admired to no end. Um, and his name was Paul Blattner. And named for his father, Howard Paul Blattner, or sorry, Howard Lee Blattner. Uh, he became the son, Howard Paul Blattner. And this is their grave or grave site. I'm sorry the, the video is jumpy. I'm not sure why. We're just shaking. I'm not shaking, I don't think. Maybe I am. Uh, but when I first moved here as a SCAD kid, an art student, there was a shop uh, catty corner to Colonial Park Cemetery, um, which would eventually be Jack Lee, the photographer's house, who took the the photo of the bird girl on the cover of Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil. But anyway, Blattner's Antiques was there on the corner. And Paul was like um, a short, stout, slightly round-bodied. Uh, it seemed like he had a bit of a little a beard. Maybe it was a mustache at the time. But anyway, um, he was just sort of like a classic shopkeeper. You know, come on in and find yourself a treasure. And I think he said that to every customer every day of his life. And that came from his father to some degree, I think, although he was... Um, a little more reserved as, as I remember him, but, uh, his father, Howard Lee Blattner, uh, military man, I want to say the Marines, but I could be wrong, but he grew up at the, uh, the child orphanage here, uh, called Bethesda boys home. And, uh, he was the coal man in Savannah way back in the early mid part of the 20th century. And as he and his son, uh, Paul Blattner would go from place to place, and often when these islands around the low country were not yet joined by highways, um, but by, they would have to go deliver the coal by boat. And all the people that lived on those islands, including many uh, Gullah Geechee families, would basically unload their stuff, like Goodwill style, onto the Blattner men. And that is how they really started their uh, collection or their collecting business. And there are, you know, many other stories there that we really don't have time for today, but, um, you know, I've shared some of them in the past and we'll share more in the future here. Um, but I remember the first thing I bought from Paul was from Blattner's Antiques was a, and it wasn't much, but, you know, I was a student, not a lot of money, but I bought like a vintage Coca-Cola bottle keychain because a girl that I fancied at the time collected Coca-Cola stuff. And, uh... Yeah, I think he kind of even looked at it like maybe I was just a tourist, you know, buying a trinket. But but I was drawn to his personality, and because I liked walking everywhere at the time downtown, I would stop in the sh shop fairly weekly. And then when his shop moved to my corner at Jones and Abercorn, Caddy Corner to Clary's Cafe, um, I literally, in, at, at the earliest part of that, I lived above the store, more or less, because the his shop was attached to probably what was an old livery or stable to uh, ta attached to the back of the 1850s house that I lived in. And so, you know, and then even when I moved, I moved right next door. So for 14 years, uh, uh, at least 14 years, I would say, Blattner Antiques was a part of my neighborhood and my block. And so Paul and I were regular confidants. And, you know, we like to joke that his uh, Rat Pack looking shop uh, full of all kinds of, of antique and vintage goodies, military-wise and bottle-wise, uh, was just kind of a front for the real business, you know, uh, of doing trading of other antiques and, and things. Uh, a little gold, I understand, maybe behind the scenes. But, you know, he was clearly a kid who uh, absolutely kept everything ever found and wasn't maybe the best... Um, cleaner of his own room as a child or something but all the same Paul was a big personality and so you know he would give me the word from the streets of his life and I would give him mine and uh, we just absolutely had a great camaraderie and you know I think maybe we went to dinner or lunch once or twice but never actually hung out really outside of the store it was just kind of like that's where we hung out in the store you know and it's such a classic like 
old, you know, southern town kind of friendship or something like that. I mean, some of you out there have those kinds of memories, and I was blessed to have that with Paul. Uh, and his father also worked in the store now and again. He was such a genteel old soul and very kind, and as I mentioned, reserved. And, um, you know, and he died in 2000, uh, 2009, I believe. No, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, 2009, I'd forgotten. I didn't think it was 2000. But anyway, he was a United States Marine, by the way, in World War II, Howard Lee Blattner. But, you know, in Paul's life, he became an archivist at the Smithsonian, and especially because he was prolific with, sorry, Coast Guard, Coast Guard, right here on the water. Probably looking for me at this point. Hey, I need a lifeline. I'm dying in my Italian couture suit. But because he had such an affinity and affiliation for the, uh, the black culture and the Gullah Geechee culture of Chatham County, uh, he helped the Smithsonian develop quite a collection of things, and especially burial pottery that was unbroken and some other uh, ritual items of root doctors. I mean, stuff that even now the Smithsonian counts as very valuable and rare in their collection. But anyway, he came home and, uh, you know, for new adventures and helped uh, start and create the Savannah History Museum, which still stands to this very day. And it's also our visitor center for you tourists that are visiting town. But Paul um, passed away, uh, really a combination of, I would say, diabetes, um, stress, you know. And at one point he was actually bitten uh, by a, a brown recluse spider. And in four years he saw 40 specialists. And um, it was just absolutely tragic but he always he told me he thought that spider bite would be the death of him and I mean I hate to be that kind of malevolent or morbid but in some way I suppose it contributed but you'll see the uh, the 19th century uh, headless ginger bottle there uh, that was a gift from me to uh, Paul when I uh, found out he passed tragically through a friend and I we were just talking in the phone and she mentioned that Paul had passed away and I was completely unfamiliar that he died uh, a couple days earlier, but you can see he died June 16th, 2015, and of course his birthday close to my own. I'm April 21st. He was April 18th, 1957, and what a perfect uh, title on his headstone, historian. Uh, of course, we got this nice stone here. Miss ya. But um, one day I'll tell you guys about the ghost story that I experienced in Bonaventure. Some of you have read it on my website, shannonscott.com already. Uh, about how seeing two ghosts of two children uh, wearing Tom Sawyer and Huck Finn styled hats in Bonaventure in the morning at 1030 in the morning uh, within um, really a, a day or two of Paul's death uh, ultimately in hindsight became sort of like an omen forecast. I knew something was going to happen when I did cite them in the cemetery and I'll, you know, you can read the article on my website or, you know, I'll maybe do a video about it later. But uh, I knew the minute I saw them and they vanished that it was kind of uh, foretelling. I didn't really feel like fearful. It was just like, okay, something is definitely going to happen in my own life. Because that's how I see like paranormal activity is kind of like a signpost, if you will. Kind of like saying, hey, pay attention. Something's going to come down the pipeline. And sure enough, uh, the tragedy was I lost a, a good friend and really a guy who inspired me endlessly. But one of my favorite things about Paul Blattner was that uh, as we were hanging out in his shop, he would keep glancing at that clock. Man, he could not wait till it hit five o'clock. And then he would leap up out of his very uh, vintage sofa chair and he would sh raise his hands in the air and say, closing time. <laughs> And yeah, I always thought maybe next to Historian they could put closing time on his uh, headstone, but Historian will do. Uh, but gang, you're, one, you're looking at one of the greatest personalities uh, Savannah had in the 20th century and part of the 21st. Uh, easily one of the most admired, I would say, bottle collectors and historians. In fact, in the whole bottle digging world and the bottle digging uh, class, this guy was the classiest and he was king. He knew where all those old trash pits and uh, privies were, and man, he found prizes left and right. And sometimes it came down to like guns when they were fighting over those bottles. Um, 
in those uh, privies. Uh, no one got shot, I don't think. But anyway, it was pretty intense sometimes. But um, yeah, it was neat about Paul was that I could go around in a in, in, in a privy myself and I could find glass of every color, a little bit of metal and things like that. And I could take that in my hand, broken glass, tiny, medium pieces, large pieces. And Paul could tell me where all that glass had been made, how long it had been in the ground. Uh, I mean, the whole thing. It was just amazing, his mind. And yeah, it's sad that he died, such a young man. But uh, anyway, Paul, we love you. We miss you, brother. And it's nice to be here in your grave, hot or not, because uh, I wouldn't miss hanging out with you for the world, brother. Gang, thanks for watching and learning a little bit about one of Savannah's great historians, Mr. Paul Blattner, and yeah, some of the rest of the family, and not to ignore his mother, Mary uh, Danielle back there, but you'll notice her very Huguenot French name. They were uh, actually descendants of Huguenots, and uh, I didn't have the honor to really know her very well, but these two gentlemen, Howard Lee and Paul, were more of my constants. But anyway, gang, it's been great storing you, and Please stay in touch with uh, BonaventureCemetery.com. And remember, anybody can give you a tour of Bonaventure, but can they really take you on a story journey? That's what we do here at Bonaventure Journeys. Not tours, but journeys. And uh, come see us soon.